Father, we thank you for your love for us. Father, we thank you that we can know you. Lord, how privileged we are to be called your children. How privileged we are to be called your own. And this morning, I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would come to every heart, every person, Alka Pursuan for more. And Lord, you know our inner thoughts, our inner fears, our inner desires. God, you know the whispers in the night, the whispers in crisis and in pain. God, you know. You know. And I pray, Lord, that everyone here, even in this moment as they bring their situation before you, Holy Spirit, that you would come and speak. Speak into it. Bring comfort where comfort is necessary. Hope and faith where that is necessary. Bring grace. In Jesus' name. Amen. Please open your Bibles with me to the book of uh, uh, Hebrews, chapter 13. Hebrews 13. And uh, let me just quickly bring some order here. Thank you for closing the door. Thank you. All right, so I'll be reading from Hebrews 13, chapter, well, chapter 13, verse 20. Verse 20, and uh, for ogen Daniel, thank you. It's to be bored, I read from the NIV vertaling. It says, now may the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead, our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, equip you, with every good thing for doing his will. And may he work in us what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. May God equip you with every good thing. You see, I believe that every believer, every one of us, has to be equipped by God. You know, we need some equipment. Ons het toerusting nodig. Ek en u, ons het die wapenrusting nodig. Yes, we need the armor of God. But we also need to be equipped by the Lord. And you know, part of our journey, deal van ons journey in the Heere, is that He is working in us to will and to work according to His purpose. Dat ons sal werk en begeer volgens sy doel. And so there's a journey happening within us. And so when you and I get saved and we get born again, and you know, when we, we, our lives get transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit as we believe in Jesus, there's a process that starts. You know, God's taking us on a journey. Praise the Yerah. We find Yerah was a journey. You guys have ever been on a long journey? Yeah. And you know, journeys are never good alone. So God takes us on a journey, and part of his journey, deal van hierdie journey, is becoming part of the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's becoming part of you guys. And so God's goal is to ultimately, ultimately build his church, or his kingdom through his church. And so he adds you and me. I bow, I work in all. So the Lord works in us in three different ways. Number one, personally, very relationally, right? God works in your life. The Holy Spirit deals, deals with you. He might heal your body, might deal with you and, and deliver you from sin, forgiveness and unbelief and so on. And so God works with me. There's a daily journey of God with me. And the second thing is God places me in a community. A family van geloviges. Amen? No, guys. Come on. Just check it. your neighbor is awake. Yeah. Just quickly check. He places us in a community of believers. I sit here in a gemeenskap van geloviges. And you know what? You will never reach alone what we can reach together. Amen. 
We will never reach alone what we can reach together. And then God places this community in a world through which he can show, through you, he wants to show his glory and goodness to the nations. Amen. For you are a chosen people. Jy en ek is een geslag. We are a chosen people. You and I are called of God. A royal priesthood. A holy nation. A people belonging to God. Peter says. That you may show forth. The word show forth. Die woord daar show forth is die Griekse woord anagelo. The one translation says that you may declare the praises of him who has called you. That's 2 Peter 1 verse 9. Sorry, I forgot to say. Uh, sorry. Uh, 1 Peter 2 verse 9. Sorry, wrong, wrong way around. 1 Peter 2 verse 9. Why did you not correct me, Stephen? Okay. I was waiting. <laughs> but you are a chosen people, a royal priest, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare, the word declare, Anna Gallo, show forth. This betekent soos a groot poster. Soos a groot sign. Have you guys driven into town recently and saw Pedro's? Hello. Yeah, and a few months ago there was McDonald's. McDonald's, McDonald's. It's getting better and better, huh? Yeah, now we've got almost all takeaways in South Africa. We just need mug and bean. Huh? Ach, Burger King, Burger King. Although it's my favorite, this burger. But anyway. Yeah, anyway, we'll skip that today. But the thing is that we become a signpost to the world of the goodness of God. But you see, this all starts in a journey of belonging. I become a child of God first. Then I belong in his house. You see, when David speaks about the house of God in Psalms, there's more than 25 Psalms that speak about the house of God. One of the greatest challenges in our world is that the believers in these days do not identify with God's house or the church. We try to go it on our own. You see, when David speaks about the house of God, he says in Psalm 5 verse 7, But I, by your great love, can come into your house in reverence and bow towards you in your holy temple. ESV translation. Psalm 23 says, Surely goodness and mercy and love. I, I, I only remembered goodness and mercy will follow me. But look at what it says here. Surely goodness and love. Oh. Yeah, goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And where will I dwell? In the house of the Lord. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Psalm 27 verse 4. One thing I ask and one thing I seek is that I may dwell in, your house, in the house of the Lord all the days of my life and gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and seek him in his temple. You know, Psalm 52, 8 says, but I'm like an olive tree flourishing in the house of the Lord. I trust in God's unfailing love forever and ever. Psalm 61 verse 4. I long to dwell in your tent forever and take refuge in the shelter of your wings. On and on, David goes, we can go a bit on. It says, Psalm 69 verse 9. The zeal for your house has consumed me. Verse 9. And the insults of those who insult you have fallen on me. The zeal for your house. You see, God has an eternal purpose. And from the beginning up to the end, His purpose stands. And you and I, I can hear this deal from here, doel van die Heere. 
Ek en hy is deel van hierdie plan van God. Maar hierdie plan, you see, God, God's plan is, it's, it's almost exemplified through the nation of Israel. We God had a plan with Abraham, but his goal was not Abraham. His goal was that through Israel, the world will see the Lord. Sy doel was, en is steeds, dat dier my en jou, en, en sy kerk, hierdie lichaam, that this body will reveal Jesus accurately to the world. That we become a major signpost saying, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And so there's always a strategy of the enemy to undermine the purposes of God. Paul says that now through, it has been hidden, the secret that's been revealed, hidden through the ages is now revealed. It's Christ in you. Did you know that when Paul wrote that letter, he was not writing to someone named Colossians. <laughs> Hello? He was writing to the church. And the church consists out of so many parts. We need each other. And so this morning, we'll be introducing a lot of members to our body today and in Polokwane very soon. In this week, basically 50 people joined our group and will be added to our body in the next week or so. God is adding to our body, but, but what happens and what I realize and see is that oftentimes we have got members in our body that's not active. That's deal van ons lichaam. If my foot would not be active, I would have a problem today. Is it not so? I would be. Praise. Hello? But that's the body of Jesus to the world looks like a limping bird, man. Because on the one hand, we've got people praising God, worshiping Jesus. On the other hand, we've got people says, Y'all, you'll be there. We need to be part of the kingdom of God. Hello? Can you think if your ears decided today to not work? We have a friend who's a pastor in the free state. He's a regional, a regional leader. He got up one morning stone deaf. Why do they call it stone deaf? This means when you beat it, you can't hear it. Say again. Yeah, okay. Okay, the stone doesn't listen. Okay, you're right. You're right. <laughs> Still, you know, I don't know. Stone there. Maybe it comes from prehistoric times. They threw you with stones you didn't notice. Woke up deaf, completely deaf. And you know, for a year, it, his whole family went into a crisis dealing with his deafness. Can you, can you think? If you'd wake up one morning and your life would be filled with silence. Praise God. <laughs> the world entered into peace. Hello? Yeah, actually, yes, I think. Hallelujah. <laughs> I would maybe think, praise God. Until you realize, my goodness, there's a problem. His wife is quite a chatterbox. She can speak a lot. So I think initially for him, it was wonderful. It's like the guy who tells the story. Oh, no, that's not appropriate. <laughs> it's not a good wedding joke. Let's leave it. Now let's go there. So he, says, <laughs> he says to his wife, they're going out to a restaurant and eating dinner. He says to his wife, I think our marriage is doing really well. We've been communicating wonderfully for the last 14 days. So he looks at him and says, are you joking? Or is this for real? He says, I've been giving you the silent treatment for 14 days and you didn't notice. <laughs> anyway... So our bodies need every part, is it not? 
isn't it? And when our bodies function, you know, Rick Joyner gives a, a, a strong word to the church, so gave a strong word to the church some years ago and says that less than 10% of the body of Christ are fulfilling their God-given purpose. We have a call. Every part of us. Whether you be a hundred and whether you be one. God wants to show himself through you. And every one of us need to commit ourselves to God and to his house. And if every one of us can do that and fulfill our role, it would be, e it would be difficult for people to go to hell in Louis Trichardt. It would be easy to bring salvation. Because our witness is a strong witness to the world. And so Jesus built his church. You see, Jesus speaks about the house of God. He says, in my father's house, there are many rooms, John 14. If it wasn't so, I wouldn't say it. And I'm going away to prepare a place for you. So Jesus prepares a place in eternal dwellings with God for us. But you know, we start to occupy on earth. Because this is also God's house. Not this building, friends. We. We. And so the body of the Lord is diverse. And this morning I don't have time to really dive into every section. I'm just putting down a foundation. We'll be looking at it last, uh, next week to complete it. But God wants to fill the world with his goodness and his glory. And he wants to do it through us. He wants to do it through his church, his body, of which you and I are an integral part. But what the enemy has gotten away with is occupying our focus and time. You know, I don't have time to read the whole parable with you, but in the book of Matthew 22, Jesus tells a parable about a wedding. That's taking place. And the fattened calf was slaughtered. I mean, if there's a fattened calf slaughtered, wedding or not, I'm coming. Hello? The meal is prepared. It's cooked. And the master of the house sends out his servants to invite the guests. And you know what happens? Every one of the invited guests were busy. I have a new field, one said. I get a new felt. The one said, I get a vrouw getrouw. Ons is op honeymoon. The one said, Maar I get a new bezigheid begin. Everyone had an excuse. The one bought a new yoke of oxen, eigenlijk maar a new tracker. I get a new tracker gekoop. En vandaag wil ons hy ploeg hak en hom rei. Everyone had an excuse. And they missed out on the invitation of God. You and I are invited into the household of the Lord. We are invited to, be, to partake of the greatest venture in heaven and earth. The generational invitation of God to be part of the greatest body in heaven and earth. That's the body of Jesus. With the greatest cloud of witnesses that spans generations. The call is take your place. In the body. And this morning as we introduce a lot of new, I think it's 17 people that will be introduced as members to our congregation this morning. The call of God upon you is take your place. And every one of us have to take our call and our election serious. It says these words in the book of 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 10. So it's make every effort to make your calling and election sure. 
Right, John? Therefore, my brothers and sisters, make every effort to confirm your calling and election. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. So the basis is as we become part of a body and the body of the Lord, we become part of an army, we become part of a family, we become part of His church. And His church is very broad. I've been to so many nations in the world and you know what? We've got family everywhere. What a privilege. We have family everywhere. Ek wil vir jy sê, in elke dorp in hierdie land het ek en jy familie. In hierdie dorp het ons niggies en neefies wat in ander plekke sit. Some of them might be naughty, but they're family. Hmm? Yeah. Even in this, in this town we've got family. There's many other churches. And they're all part of the kingdom of God. They all belong to the eternal body of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so when we join his body, we have the call to take our place. And if God is on a journey with you and with me, it requires our response. So let me show it this way. And I'm going to require a volunteer. And uh, Sam, would you be my volunteer today? Yes, Samuel, would you be my volunteer? So Sam is becoming a teenager. Yeah. <laughs> and so Sam has been growing up. And you know, he is a very happy young boy. If I, if I, he's still, you know, he's been working in the children's ministry since he was how old? Who mm. old? Since he was a little boy. He's volunteering on his own now. He's going on there. And he's now taking his own classes with the children's church. Can you believe it? But you know, when Sam was a little boy and we went anywhere in town, we would walk in hand in hand, right? Hand in hand. Now we won't be caught dead holding my hand <laughs> in town. <laughs> he won't be caught dead. In the beginning, he, as I say, will he door to go? Yeah, yeah. He just sees toys, sweets. Now he doesn't care. He wants to stay home. <laughs> a PlayStation or what you call it. Hey, I, we have say friend, I let chat and care and so on. You see, but, but to, ex, to experience what God has for us, we need to be on this journey together in the whole season of growing up in God. And Jesus is leading you and me as part of his body. So we grow. Sam is not the little boy he was anymore when we pushed him in a pram. Hello? He was very cute. Oh my gosh. He was so cute. Stephen wanted to be a, an adult since he was born. <laughs> From day one, he wanted to be an adult. He wanted to be a big guy, and he wanted to be in the army, and he's going to beat every enemy. And he's going to beat up anybody else as well. <laughs> the devil included. Anyway, so, in this journey... In this journey, we are also growing up. And if we walk with God through the seasons of life, we'll become mature in His kingdom. But here's the key, never let go. But our issue is, it's easy to say, ah, yeah. I can hear these stories. I have my own plan. I have an idea. This is what I'm going to do. And we find it so often that people don't stay connected to what the Lord Jesus wants to do. And we walk circles in our life. You know, circles. Until we get back again. Now we're again with the Lord. Back at His plan. And then we start and we walk with God and then we let go. And that's immaturity that happens. It's, it happens to us all. But we need to stick connected to the Lord. 
and connected to his body. Because in his body there's safety. You know, many people are afraid of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. I want to tell you, never be afraid of the Holy Spirit or his gifts. Be afraid of people who do not walk with the body of Jesus. Those gifts are dangerous. Those who are not working with the church of Jesus, they're their own thing, own body, only for themselves. When their name becomes so big that you don't hear Jesus. Listen, friends, we've been through this with Shepherd Bushiri, many people who abuse his gifts, but you, never, you only hear them, you never hear Jesus. You never hear him. And they're not connected to the church, they're connected only to their church. It's a danger. So in our journey with God, we need to learn to walk with him. We can be stubborn. Jesus is going this way. He wants to go that way. Come, track him out. Who's going to win? Ultimately. <laughs> Who's going to win? Ultimately. But you know, Now we've grown up, right? Thank you, Samuel. Can we give Samuel a hand this morning? So, he wants to go that way. I want to go this way. Who's going to win? <laughs> Ultimately, the Lord will always win. All right. But how long, how much time does it waste in my life? How much pain must we go through? Hello. How much suffering must we go through? You know, my... Um, can we do it again? Thank you, Stephen. So we need to learn to work with God. Where He's going. And I tell you now, God is never not going with His church. Because He built it. It's His thing. Not mine. I will be part of this. And you know what? If Jesus... Doesn't it then I will die, someone else will be here. The kingdom will go on. I'm the ninth pastor in this church. It's not mine. It's not my thing. It's God's thing. He builds it. We're just serving what he's doing. And you and I need to find our spot. You know, I work a lot with camps and people on camps. He's not building camps. He's into saving people. He builds his church. God is into saving people. That's why we go to camps. And you and I need to find our place in the body. I, I deal often with people who, who struggle to receive some stuff. You know, I've dealt with someone recently who was in a process of, of uh, um, dealing with cancer. And they're not from our local church. But they are in, in treatment. And, and the problem is, as soon as there's any better ship, it seems like there's a going back. There's a deterioration again. And um, then they found out this guy is continuing to smoke. Now listen, have you ever seen on every packet of cigarettes it says, this causes cancer? I mean, it's clear. Read it. Okay, I don't have my glasses, so I might have to read like that. It might be written small. But you need to know that if you do that, if you drive reckless on the road, you'll have an accident, friends. There's some stuff which we can't get involved in. And if you willfully persist, you will have a problem. My dad, 30, 40 odd years ago, God gave a prophetic warning to him. said, you need to stop smoking. It's detrimental. To, it, will, it will ultimately cause a problem for you. God spoke to him. And you know, he stopped it dead. And he was, when he passed away, he was not smoking for how many years? 38? 37 years he wasn't smoking. Now this brother says, well, he can't understand why God doesn't do this. Well, look, very, very simply, sir, you need to work with the doctors to receive the process that's healing, right? It doesn't help. We continue undermining ourselves. We need to work with the Lord. If he, Ephesians, Isaiah 1 verse 19 says, Be willing and obedient. 
and you will eat the good of the land. You know what? God has good things in store for you. The good of the land. Good car, good house, good wife. He's got a good idea for your life. Hello? He wants you to look healthy like me. If you're so skinny, you don't look healthy, man. You look like Ethiopians. God has a good plan for you. He wants you to experience the good. Does it not say, taste and see that the Lord is good? Is it not one of the characteristics of God's nature that He is good? He is not the root of evil. It's His heart for you. But here's the key. If we work with God, with His plan, and even if we then go through the valley of the shadow of death, we don't have to fear evil for the Lord is with us. Amen? And He will take us through. We won't camp there, stay there. There will be a time if Jesus doesn't return soon that we all will pass away. This body will be laid down, we'll be clothed with our eternal bodies. And that's fine. But we'll be clothed serving the Lord. And so this morning as we speak about the church of Jesus, the house of God, we need to have our hearts correctly connected. And this morning, if you are here, and you hear me, I'm speaking to you. God's house is a good place to be. Commit to the Lord yourself and your time. Make your life available to what He wants to do. He is God. And he is faithful. He has called each and every one of us to be part of his body. I is nie in verwarring. He is not confused about you. So there, just where you are, can we pray together this morning and say, God, connect me correctly to you. Because your church is your body. I want to be correctly connected to Jesus. And his body. So Father, that's our prayer. For every single one of us. For our church within the broader church. We want to be correctly connected to you. And David shows us this with his heart. Better is one day in your courts, he says than a thousand elsewhere. God, thank you for every part of this body that you expand and grow and help us to connect with it in Jesus' name.